In this video, I'm going to show you how I find profitable private label products to sell on Amazon. And I'm going to actually include a free product research flowchart that you can use to make sure you're not missing any important steps. But first, my name is Crescent, and on my channel I share tips and strategy videos, just like this one, on how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing. All right, let's get started. Okay, so in order to find profitable private label products to sell, you need to set yourself up with the right tools, just like any other business. You can't start a painting or lawn mowing business without paintbrushes, ladders, or a lawnmower, right? And using tools that you can easily navigate and comprehend can dramatically cut down the time you spend doing product research, as product research is the most difficult and time-consuming part of the entire Amazon FBA private label business model. So I'm using the Viral Launch tool suite here. They have two tools that I'm going to use in this video to do product research. This is the product discovery tool that helps you find new product ideas that meet specific search criteria. And the other tool, which we'll get into later on in the video, is the market intelligence tool that helps you analyze the product idea niches that you find. All right, jumping right in. You can see here, this is the product discovery tool. And on the left, you can specify specific categories that you want to find products to sell in. And you can see that I've pre-selected several of these categories, and these are the categories that I have the most luck in. The categories that I haven't selected are generally ones that have way too many returns, such as electronics, and are way too competitive, like toys and games, or they have too much liability, such as lotions and creams, topical products, or things that you would ingest or put in or on your body. And there's also products like textiles and clothing that I don't want to get involved in because of the variations that are involved and way too many returns because people like to buy these things and if they don't look right or they don't fit right, they return them, okay? So what I suggest doing is starting off with these categories here, but don't limit yourself. You can always expand and look in other categories too and see if you can find some luck looking for products there. Now on the right is where you can set the specific filters or search criteria to pull up products that meet these specific filters. So the first one here is the monthly sales. Now you can see that I've set the minimum to 300. So where does this 300 units per month come from? Well, this is determined by your planning phase. There's actually three stages of product research. There's planning, product discovery, and niche analysis. So what you need to do is really plan out your product research before you do it. And so the 300 units per month number comes from the fact that you're looking for products that sell at least 10 units per day and hopefully with a profit margin of at least five to ten dollars per unit therefore you can make around three thousand dollars profit per month now if you're looking for more information on how to do proper planning i'll leave a link to it in the video description below now the next filter you need to set is the price now you can see here that i've set a minimum of fifteen dollars and a maximum of 25. Now, you can play around with these numbers, but what I do suggest is to look for products that are at least $15 and higher. And this is for the main reason that you need to find products where there's enough profit for you to make. Otherwise, it's not worth your time. And when you calculate your unit costs, that means how much it costs for you to buy the product and ship it to Amazon, and then you subtract the Amazon FBA fees, you want to make sure whatever's left is at least $5, otherwise it's not worth your time and effort. So $15 typically will leave you around $5 of profit. Now the upper limit, I wouldn't go more than $50 because anything over $50 no longer is an impulse buy. So people tend to put more time and research into buying these products. So what I recommend is looking for products anywhere between $15 and $50 price range. Now again, you can use these numbers that I have here as a starting point, but don't restrict yourself. You can always play around with these numbers such as setting this to $12 or $14.97 or slightly over $50 or what have you. Okay, play around. There's no right or wrong way. Now the monthly revenue, I don't typically use, but you can also include this to find products with a minimum monthly revenue to make sure you can hit the profit target goals that you're trying to make. And you can use the one third rule, just like with the price, about one third of the revenue is going to be your profit. So what I suggest here is looking for products that are making at least $8,000 to $9,000 revenue every month. 
So around $2,500 to $3,000 will be money you can put in your own pocket, okay? The next one is the review count. And it's important here that you set a maximum here because this is how we determine the competition in a niche. And I have a maximum of 75 here. So you're looking for products that have low competition, meaning they have less than 75 reviews. All right, so now if you click on the show products button, the product discovery tool now searches through Amazon's marketplace and pulls up all of the products that meet the filters that we've set. So what you wanna do here now is scroll through these products and look for products that are strange and out of the ordinary. And what I suggest is avoiding products that are fads, trends, novelty items, and products that are very commonplace. So things that you would see around your house or your friend's house, because those are typically products that are way too competitive. Okay, so the first few you can see here, these are uh, vitamins and um, something that you ingest. And again, I stay away from these products due to the liability, so I skip right over them. Okay, so when I scroll through here, what I typically look at is the photo, and if it's something strange that I don't immediately recognize, that catches my eye, okay? And so there's nothing here, so let's take a look at the next page. And this is something strange and out of the ordinary. My immediate reaction is I don't recognize what it is from the photo, and when I read the title, it's the acrylic ice rock cubes, which I have no idea what those are. So what I would do is I would cue this up. So if I click on this button here, I can cue this up in another tab, and then I'll continue searching. This way I'm not splitting up my workload. So I queue up three, four, or five products at a time, and then I'll analyze those products all together. Okay, so let's continue looking here. Okay, and looking at the photo here, this is something interesting. I don't know what this is. These look like they're fraction tiles. Maybe it's an educational thing. So let's cue this one up. And here's two things I want to point out here as well. A, this is a clothing item, so you have to stock a lot of variations, right? And that can work against you as far as cash flow is concerned. And like I said earlier with clothes, you're going to get a lot of returns. But on top of that, this is a trademarked product. You can see that this has NCAA and it has to do with the Tennessee Titans or something like that, okay? So avoid products like this because it can be considered as a counterfeit item if you didn't go through the right avenues to sell a trademark product. All right, so let's move on. And you probably notice that I'm skipping through a lot of products and that's because through experience, you're gonna know that these typical products are way too commonplace and so it's just gonna be way too competitive so don't waste any time on them by doing any further analysis. So just skip right over them immediately. So what I'm looking for is products that I don't immediately recognize. Now a pro tip here is beginners typically do product research using the same filters that they've been taught like the ones I showed you earlier, or they'll do product research by going through these pages in sequential order. Now the key to finding products is to do things that other people aren't doing and thinking outside the box. So for me, I actually like to do product research by looking at random pages or in reverse order. So for example, I'll just jump to page 10 and look backwards. And so if we scroll down, these look pretty interesting. This is a beer plug tap brush. I have no idea what that is, so let's uh, also queue this one up. Okay, so now that we have a few products queued up, let's analyze these product ideas. So let's take a look at the first one we found, which is this acrylic ice rock cubes. Okay, so what you wanna do is you don't wanna analyze individual products that you find through the product discovery tool. What you need to do is analyze an entire niche, okay? So to do that, we're gonna figure out what the shortest, broadest, and most relevant keyword phrase is that describes this product. And in my opinion, it's gonna be acrylic ice cubes. Okay, so make sure you choose all departments and type in acrylic ice cubes. And then what you wanna do is scan through the search results and make sure that the majority of the results are indeed the same product that you're looking at. If it's not, then you're probably using the wrong keyword, okay? So if we scroll through here, we can see that this is that product. So we've probably chosen the right keyword, and then we'll pull up the Market Intelligence Chrome Extension Tool from Viral Launch. 
And as you can see, this Chrome extension tool pulls up all of the listings, including all of the relevant data that we can analyze all in a single glance. And this is how you can quickly and easily analyze an entire niche for your product idea. So you can see here that these are the listings and we can see their monthly revenue, the price, the monthly sales, as well as the number of reviews. And those are the most important columns that we're gonna analyze, okay? And one thing I wanna point out here is you can see that the top three listings have an SP next to it. And that means that these are sponsored listings. And the sponsored listings, if we close this real quick, are these listings here that say sponsored. And these are placed here through PPC, which is the pay-per-click campaigns. So they're not placed here organically through the search. These are placed here based on bids. So you wanna ignore these listings. There's some at the top as well as at the bottom. So if we scroll down, you'll see there's more sponsored listings here. So if we open up the Chrome extension again, you'll notice that the top three are here and they're unchecked. So they're not included in the analysis. You can see that here. And if we scroll down, the other ones at the bottom of the page are also unchecked. They're not included in the analysis. It's very important that you don't include them, all right? So if we take a look, the first thing we wanna consider is, is the price point above $15? So what's great about the Viral Launch Chrome extension tool here is that the average price is displayed right here and it shows that it's $11.35. And at that price, it's below the $15 price point that we have set as a minimum. So you wanna make sure that you are more diligent now in calculating your unit costs to make sure you can hit your minimum $5 of profit, right? But the thing is, is if we take a look at the actual listings here, you can see a lot of them are selling for more than $15. So what you would need to do is figure out what kind of value these sellers are adding to the product in order to command the higher price point because you don't wanna sell at these lower seven to $6 price points because there's no profit there for you. Okay, so the next column we're gonna analyze is the monthly sales. You wanna make sure that the majority of these sellers are doing at least 250 to 300 units per month, all right? And so you can see here that the Chrome extension has calculated that average for you. The monthly sales is only 94, so that's not enough, okay? So that's two things that this product idea has failed on. Now, if we take a look at the reviews, we wanna make sure that at least seven out of the top 10 have less than 75 reviews. Now this is something that you can actually count. So if you look down here, there's only one that has more than 75 reviews, okay? And analyzing the competition is where you don't wanna look at the average review count here because this one shows 20. And that's not accurate enough because you wanna actually count how many listings have more than 75 reviews, not go by the average here because a few listings that have very high reviews or very low reviews will throw off an entire average, all right? So make sure you count that. Now, the other metric we wanna look at is making sure that it's not brand dominated. And what brand dominated means is that there isn't one or more sellers that have multiple listings on the first page, like three or more. And I can see right away that this dome star has several listings here, okay? So we don't look at the sponsored ones. We can see here there's one, two, three, four, five, right? So this is brand dominated. So again, it's now failed multiple criteria. So I would pass on this product idea. One thing I want to point out before we move on is you can see there's a product idea score that Viral Launch assigns to a product niche and it's given it a four stars out of five. So in my opinion, you should only use this as a reference. By actually analyzing the data, we've shown that this is a bad product idea. So don't go by the score, even though it shows that it's a four out of five stars. Always analyze the actual data. Okay, so let's move on. All right, the second product that we found was this uh, magnetic rainbow fraction tiles, right? So this looks pretty interesting because I've never seen something like this before. So what we need to do is figure out what the shortest, most relevant keyword phrase is to describe this product. So I'm gonna guess that it's just fraction tiles. So let's copy that and make sure we choose all departments and paste that there and then quickly scan through the search results to make sure that the majority of them is this fraction tile and it looks like it, that it is. So let's pull up the Viral Launch Chrome extension. All right, so let's analyze the niche. The first thing we're gonna look at again is, is the price at least $15? So again, ignoring the sponsored listings up here, we can look at the average price is around $20, which is great, all right? So now if we take a look at the monthly sales, is it at least 250 to 300 units per month? 
And if I just take a look here, I can already see that most of these are less than 200 units a month, right? Some of these are only in the double digits. And you can see here the monthly sales only shows 185 units, okay? So moving on to the reviews, seven out of the top 10 need to have less than 75 reviews. So if we take a look and actually count it, we can see that there's only two that have more than 75 reviews, okay? So it actually passes that, but it fails on the sales velocity. Okay, you gotta make sure that when you're analyzing niches that it passes all of the product research criteria. And again, I have a flow chart that you can download for free that goes over all of this so you don't miss any of these important steps. Okay, and if we take a look at brand domination, we can see that this hand to mind has one, two, three, four listings here on the first page, okay? So it's borderline brand dominated, okay? so. I would pass on this product idea as well, even though again, this product idea score shows a four out of five stars. So one thing I wanna point out here is you can actually see the estimated search volume right here in the Chrome extension and it shows 699, which is actually really low. And what you can do is you can click on this and it pulls up the viral launch keyword research tool and it shows you that fraction tiles only has 699 searches per month which isn't very high. So you can actually use this metric to gauge the level of competition and saturation. For example, if sales is really good for this entire niche, but this keyword phrase has low search volume every month, then that's a red flag, meaning that perhaps a lot of these sales are driven from outside sources. So if you were to enter this niche, you can't compete because all you can do is advertise through Amazon's PPC. So these other listings are perhaps well-established or their name brand corporations that you'd be competing with and they are driving sales from their outside sources. Now low search volume with high sales could also mean you could be using the wrong keyword phrase. So make sure that you're doing that correctly too because by using the wrong keyword phrase, you are potentially analyzing bad data which can lead you to falsely believing that it's a good product idea with low competition when in fact it isn't. So definitely make sure you're doing that correctly. I'll leave a link to a video on using the correct keywords in the video description below. All right, so the last product that we found were these uh, beer plug tap brushes, which I have no idea what they're even used for, but uh, let's take a look at what the broadest keyword would be for this uh, niche, and I'm gonna assume it's just beer plugs. So let's just look in all departments and beer plugs and scan through here to make sure it is the product and it looks like it is. And we'll pull up the Chrome extension. All right, and what I noticed right away is Viral Launch scored this a four and a half stars out of five. All right, so let's take a look at the data. Now, if we look at the price point, we can see that the average price is $10.21. It gets way too low, right? And if I scan through here, you can see that most of these are actually less than $15. Okay, so that's one strike already for this niche. And if we take a look at the monthly sales, we can see that some of these are 300, 500 uh, units, but most of them are less than 200 units a month. And if you look at the monthly average, it's only 124, so that's two strikes. And if we take a look at the competition, which is based on the reviews, none of these are over 75 reviews, so it does pass there. And if we take a look at the brand domination, Again, don't look at the sponsored listings, so let's just scroll those up. We can see there's CR Brew Beer has one, two, three listings there, okay? So uh, I would say this is not brand dominated, okay? But based on the fact that the price point is too low and the monthly sales is too low, even though that this is a four and a half stars out of five, this is a bad niche, okay? So make sure you analyze product niches correctly and that passes all of the product research criteria. Now, pro tip here is, when you're doing product research, like I said earlier, there's really no right or wrong way, but you need to think outside the box. So outside of looking at just the search results in the product discovery tool, you can find other products by looking elsewhere. For example, with these beer plug taps, we can scroll down, and if we look here, we can see there's a frequently bought together section. This can give you ideas of other product ideas, like this uh, olive liquor bottle pourer spout, or this stainless steel uh, pourer. Okay, or you can look here and see what other products come up here that catch your eye. All right, and you can analyze those product ideas. And another good way is typically if a seller has a good selling product, they probably have other ones too. 
So it's a good idea to look inside their store. So this product is sold by CR Brew Beer. So if we open this in another tab, we can see what other products this seller has, right? And what's great is the Chrome extension works on this page too. So if we open that up, we can see that CR Brew Beer is selling these other products. If we take a look, for example, through the monthly revenue, we can see that they have this uh, beer plug tap, which is the one we're looking at, making 8,000 revenue per month. And if we scroll down, that one's too low. Here's one, um, a brewing keg, that they're making $30,000 per month. And here's one here that they're selling, which looks like a glass fermenter, that they make $12,000 per month. Here's a $23,000 per month product. And you see another one here that they're making $40,000 a month on, and it's a uh, bottle bash game set. So if you queue that up, we can see what it is and perhaps analyze this niche as well. So let's look it up. It's a bottle bash game set. Make sure you choose all departments. Okay, and this looks like that is the product. There's several other people selling it as well, but it doesn't seem like it's that popular because it, the results kind of sway away from it, right? So if we take a look at the Chrome extension, and I can see that just by looking at the title that a lot of these aren't that Bottle Bash. So this Bottle Bash game probably isn't very popular because there's only half a dozen of these products being sold on Amazon. Okay, so this is probably a bad product idea. So I hope this helps you see how you can do product research by starting with the product discovery tool and then looking for strange and out of the ordinary products and then analyzing these niches to seeing if they're viable products or not. And then not limiting yourself to just the product discovery tool, but looking elsewhere as well for different product ideas too. Now, like I said, I have this flow chart that you can follow that'll help you do product research so you can make sure you're not missing any important steps. And you can see here it's broken down by phase. So the first one is planning and what you need to do here. Then there's product discovery, how to validate a niche and what you need to look for. And by following the flow chart, it tells you what actions you need to take in order to make sure you find a viable and profitable product so they can move on to finally contacting suppliers for the product. All right, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you'd like to learn more about product research, check out these videos here. Thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And make sure you click that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. There's also a link in the description below to our community forums, which you should totally join. And as always, thanks for watching.